Hello and welcome everyone to another section in the data hour series. We are thrilled to be here with you this uh, afternoon for a section full of action packed learning. I am Nikhil, part of data science stream at Analytics Vidya. For those who have joined us for the first time, a brief introduction to data hour sections. The data hour is a series of webinars conducted by Analytics Vidya and led by data industry experts. It is a fun way to understand the concepts of data science from leading players in the data tech domain. And the name suggests it's one hour dedicated to data. We are hopeful that these sections are going to be great source of enrichment and value adding for our community members. Now on to our section today which is data science data management using Pandas. Pandas is an open source Python package that is most widely used for data science, data analysis, and machine learning tasks. It is built on top of another package named NumPy, which provides support for multidimensional arrays. In this data world, the speaker will demonstrate the concepts of data management using Pandas in detail. You will also be doing and some practical or a problem statement for your better understanding. I hope you are excited to attend this data data hour with us. Before we kick things off, and I hand it over to our speaker. A quick recap of uh, things: we are recording this section, and we will making the recording available in few days on our YouTube channel. And please use the Q and A section for any questions you might having during the session and we will do our best to answer them as the data hour progress or towards the end. Also, we will share a poll about the feedback of the session towards the end of the session, which I request you all to kindly fill up. Now on to our speaker. In this session of our data hour, we have Somya Badra Roy with us. Somya Badra is currently working as data scientist at Cognizant, having five plus years of experience and developed various data science, machine learning, deep learning based solutions which create a long term value for clients, organizations, and society. We will be putting up everything about uh, speaker Soma Brother Roy in the link uh, in the chat section of his LinkedIn profile and YouTube profile. Now, on to the speaker. Yeah. Complete virtual stage is yours. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, analytics either to give me the opportunity to, to share my knowledge to everyone. I hope through the session it will help a lot of people. Uh, to understand pandas and at the same time to understand the data science as well. So uh, let's further do, uh, I'm going to share my screen and start the session there. Uh, I'm not able to share my screen. Okay, fine. I will Post disabled participants, okay. Sir, please check now. Uh, no, I could not do it. Mm -hmm. uh, now? Uh, yeah, I think I can do it now. Okay. Uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Uh, yes, sir. We can see your screen. Okay. So basically, in this session, uh, we're going to talk about the pandas, and at the same time, 
we are going to talk about the data science and the, how the pandas is used in the real life projects and how the pandas could help you out in your uh, data science journey so if you are a fresher this is definitely can help you out to give you the understanding of the pandas and at the same time uh, the overall machine learning understanding you will have uh, through the session so if i go to the next slide so so what are going to learn today so as i said like we are going to learn pandas to the data science project okay so these six things we are going to cover in the whole session today so first i'll introduce you the pandas like what is pandas is all about and then uh, what is the machine learning overview so how you know what we will give the machine learning then step of a data science project so i'll talk about in depth like all the steps which is to follow in the real life data science project and then i'm going to tell you that like for every step i'll going to uh, discuss uh, through a practical session like how the steps uh, are uh, going for, uh, forward uh, and uh, i'm going to give you the detailed uh, understanding of that and uh, we are going to build a model uh, using the data we are going to use and also we are going to validate the model so in the all the steps so basically in the all the steps uh, pandas is using uh, used in various parts of this uh, processes so i hope uh, i'm going to give you a very really good uh, understanding of those so in the next slide you can see that so what is pandas so pandas is basically a python package uh, so if you are uh, doing a data science using python most probably you heard the pandas so pandas is a very wonderful package and it has a lot of features like uh, so that is why a lot of people are using like approximately 5 to 10 million users worldwide are using the pandas uh, who are doing the data science and uh, it supports a lot of files formats so it's the advantage of pandas so you can uh, use excel you can use csv parquet or different kind of files you can load in the pandas as a data frame and then you can do your analysis on that and uh, it has a lot of prebuilt methods attributes uh, to explore data exploration and manipulation so the thing is that in data science uh, when you do the data science project uh, you will have to uh, understand the data properly so you have to explore the data in a depth and then you will be able to do the uh, machine learning part of that so in that uh, purpose the pandas is one of the best tools available in the uh, market right now so so i've also given a, a pandas api link over here so is if you go to the link you will uh, if you want to learn more of that like what are the apis are available and everything uh, then you'll be able to uh, understand that okay so so how do you able to install the pandas so it's just like another python library if you know python so uh, python can be used in uh, various formats like uh you can use python in your local environment like you install it in your own computer or you could use it use in the cloud like you can use in aws sagemaker or you can use it in google collaboratory or any other uh, cloud format you can use that so over there how do you going to use it so you just need to uh, run the pip install pandas you'll be able to install the pandas library over there and also you can if you use the conda environment then you have to use the conda and for jupyter notebook also you can use the pip install pandas like you have to use the exclamation at the beginning so so the thing is that like yeah, in this session i'm going to go go and forth between these two like i'm going to showcase you the slides and at the same time i'm going to explain those slides in detail in the uh, google collaborative notebook which i already have so let me go to the google collaborative notebook and how it is looks like basically so okay so this is the google collaborative notebook you're going to get this notebook at the end of the session so uh, before that i'm going to just uh, showcase you everything on the notebook and also in the slides so as i said like uh, if you want to install pandas in google collaborative also so you can just uh, run this command pip install pandas so if i run this cell so you can see that uh, it is showing that it is already satisfied so that means it is already installed in the environment so in that case if you don't install you just need to use this command then you can install the pandas in the environment and after that uh, i've given some of the links over there how to install the pandas and also 
like basically pandas api is have given over here so after that so how we are going to import the libraries so any pandas uh, like the any other python library you can install pandas and then import it using the import pandas spd or numpy as np or i have also uh, imported other two visualization libraries uh, matplotlib and the cbond because i'm going to use it in the later in the uh, presentation so it will help full for to import right now okay so after i import this two then what you can do you can just check the version of pandas okay so what is the version is currently available in the notebook so it is uh, 1.3.5 so it is the version i think the latest version is 1.4 around but it's a 1.3 is installed in the uh, google collaboratory environment okay so now i going back to the uh, presentation okay so we understand the pandas we understand how to install the pandas library then uh, let me showcase you the basically how the machine learning projects are all about like what how what is the machine learning so machine learning is all about to give uh, to learn machine automatically through the data so for an example if i can say you like if you are a, every people are born as a child right at the beginning they don't know anything of the world like they uh, don't know their parents they know they don't know their friends family the different uh, status of the society the, like any the lot of information is available in the society they do not know nothing else about it but as they grow up uh, they learn from their parents uh, their society their friends family uh different information they're getting from their uh okay from their friends and family and they can understand uh, different things so the knowledge their parents are transferring to the child and then the child can understand everything uh, through that knowledge and also they are experiencing different things and from that also they're learning a lot of things so that is what also happening in the machine learning so in the machine learning what happened is that in machine learning at the beginning the algorithm do not know nothing so basically you do not know nothing but once you give the data to the algorithm the algorithm learn from the data and once it learn from the data it is going to give you the output of the data so as as it experience the different things in the data like what are the different relationships different patterns it learned from the data and it learns it and once you give the new data to the algorithm it uh, based on that experience like whatever learning it has it is going to give you the output so that is a machine learning so broadly the machine learning can be classified into mainly three parts one is the supervised learning another one is the unsupervised learning and another one is the semi supervised which is a combination of both like supervised learning and the unsupervised learning right so for supervised learning you can classify uh, you can subdivide the supervised into two parts what is the regression learning and another one is the classification learning in these two part and also the unsupervised is basically the clustering okay so regression is all about you have both the input and output like x1 and x2 over here i have given that as an example x1 and x2 are the input features over here and y is the output feature so you have given a uh like data set where you know both the input and output that's a supervised learning and if the output is a continuous variable like over here you can see it's a 54 38 20 so this is the different continuous variables as output so this uh problem statement you can think of as the regression so you are going to predict the y which is a continuous variable using this x1 and x2 so it's a supervised learning right the same way the classification also can happen so the only difference between the regression and classification is that in classification you have to tell the classes like one and zero like is it going to happen or not if it's a binary classification of or it's a multi-class classification then uh, it could be like uh, you have to predict the different colors uh, different colors of uh, of some uh, algorithm like uh, maybe you are using the asian paints uh, you are working for asian paints and uh, maybe for some business uh, purposes they want to find out the which color they are going to uh, customer want to buy so 
in that case that will be the multi class classification if there are more than three or four colors over there so this is another example and for clustering what happened is that for clustering it is under the unsupervised the thing is that you are only able to get the only these two like x1 and x2 this is the input feature only but the cluster part which i have highlighted here you are not going to get that so it's a uh, unsupervised because you have only given these two and you have based only these two you have to cluster the data set into different clusters right so suppose 46 and 50 is belongs to the cluster one and two and 39 belongs to cluster two it has been decided by the algorithm itself like you have only put the x1 next to the algorithm and it is going to learn from that and put the uh, first two rows into two different clusters so that's the unsupervised like the algorithm don't know output of it but it learned from the data and find out some pattern total and going to give you the clusters okay and the another one is the same supervised is basically is a combination of both uh, supervised and unsupervised algorithm so semi supervised means uh, you have the data set but uh, in the data set what happened is some of the columns like if sub, for an example if the data set is 100 rows are there in the 100 rows maybe 30 rows only have the output or y value or cluster value the remaining uh, 70 do not have any kind of output so the semi supervised what you will do is that it will use both like uh, label data which is already there that is the 30 rows and unlimited data and learn from the data set and all and then it is going to predict the unknown data sets like unknown clusters which they do not have any kind of output so this is the uh, whole uh, machine learning you can think of basically mainly the problem statements can be decided into three parts regression classification and clustering okay so if i go to the next slide here okay so in the next slide uh, basically i'm going to uh, i've divided the whole uh, data science project journey into different parts basically this is the main parts you can think of a data science project so first of all is the objective like uh, for like anything the data science project need to have some objective also like uh, what objective means you want to find uh, like you want to find something like uh, if you are suppose uh, for an example you have a titanic data set so for titanic data set uh, the objective would be uh, to find out who is going to survive like yes or no like this person is going to survive or not this uh, uh, passenger was survived or not that's the objective of that uh, problem statement okay so another example i can think of like uh, um, if you want to predict the stock price right so uh, you have given a data set there are some uh, stock price level are already there what was the stock price earlier in this thing? so you want to find out the stock price in the next day or next month or next week so that could be a problem statement so the objective is very important like uh, your client is coming to you some problem statement which they are facing in your business and they want to find out the data they have they want to find out some patterns of the data and uh, get some model output so that they can leverage that output to better their business objective so the objective is important then after that comes the requirements so you know the objective and definitely you are a data scientist so you know uh, everything of the objectives and then you have to understand to fulfill the objective what are the requirements you have right so what kind of data you require like what are the data they already have you need to see all the data they have then you have to understand the requirement like out of the all the data which data you need based on your domain knowledge and how to get the data you are going to get the data through the api like real time data you are going to get or you are going to get the batch data and uh, like the data is in millions or billions rows are there if the rows are very high like it's a big data then what kind of infrastructure you need to build like uh, like how many basically how many uh, cpus you need or how many like gpus you need all the things you need to cover in the requirement area and then once you have done all these things then comes the development area so in development this is the main part like you can think of the development and validation these two parts 
takes about 80% of the whole churn right for any data science project so and along the development till the machine learning model from uh, data understanding to machine learning model it takes around 60% of the time so so the data understanding is very important like you know to understand the data properly then you have to visualize the data uh, visualization also is a part of the data understanding then you have to uh, create features if the features is not not very relevant or you have to find out the relevant features of the out of the data then you have to select the features then uh, model selection you have to select different models and what model is best suitable for your problem statement then you have to create the model training right so this is the development part then comes the validation part so validation part means you have done the model training and all it is giving the output then you are going to uh, see the model output how it is uh, performing with the uh, real time data like the already you have some real data and model is giving you some output so you are just comparing these two to see uh, how the model is performing uh, based on the real data uh, then check the performance of the model then once you get that how you are going to explain the model output how we are going to do that so this is the validation part once you've done everything like uh, objective you know requirement analysis development part you have done validation you have done everything you have done after that what happened you're going to deploy the model right so where are you going to deploy the model you're going to deploy the model maybe in uh, real life your clients may be using some smartphone uh, they are they uh, they have some application they are they are going to put your data set uh, put the outputs uh, maybe they can use it uh, in the real life there could be different scenario they can put the data in some cloud uh, services from there they are fetching the data do some analysis there could be multiple scenarios uh, they can use the data set right so now once you have done all these things so this is the different parts of a uh, data science journey and over here only the development part in the validation part this is the most critical part where the pandas is is a lot basically so that is why i have highlighted pandas over here and i'm going in the next slides i'm going to uh, tell in detail all the different steps using the pandas in development and validation part and also create a model over the model and uh, showcase the output of it okay okay so going to the next uh, slide so before i go to the next slide uh, do any any anyone have some uh, link query you can ask me till now basically uh, they can't mute and um, unmute themselves but they can put up questions in q and a section okay okay Sir, can you give me a real life business problem of regression clustering? clustering? Uh, I'm going to show an example in the next slides. Uh, uh, project basically I'll create. I want a real life example of unsupervised problem. Uh, no, today I'm only going to uh, talk about the classification, not the un unsupervised data training, data science and slides. I'll give you the a link at the, the last at the of the course. Uh, you're going to give get a link, and from there you'll get all the uh, materials from this session. This quick data. You need to uh, more elaborate on that. Uh, I've already given the example. Okay, so uh, I'll talk more on those later. So let me just go to the uh, continue the session. Okay. So now uh, basically uh, you have understand the the journey of a data science project. Now, first you're going to get the data source, like data sourcing, like how the data you're going to get, like it's a batch data or streaming data or single or multiple files data. So batch data means uh, uh, the data is already created and you're going to get the data in weekly basis or monthly basis. And based on that, you're going to create the models out of it, right? So this is the batch data. The streaming data means the real-time data. 
which is happening real time so right now uh, the i am talking and you are listening to this the session so it's a streaming session right so in the real time it is happening so it's a streaming data and in data science also once you get the streaming data you have to create a model in a way that it can handle the streaming data in this way okay so streaming data a single file and multiple files what do i mean by single file multiple files because uh, for an example if you have a store so in the store uh, there could be uh, different kind of data sets right uh, suppose uh, you have a data set of customers only you have a data set of your products only you have a data set of your sales only so there the, the information is available in data tables and different different tables and you have to use all the data combined together and then you can create the data set and create some model out of it okay so so that's a multiple file some single file also there could be only one file you have given and all the information are there okay so so that is what i'm going to show in the uh, in the example okay so in the data sourcing part over here okay, okay. so uh, oh, in the session i am going to use two data sets one is the definitely the titanic data set uh, i have chosen the titanic because it is easy to understand and everyone can relate to it and most of the people can know the titanic data set and another one is the summer data set it's a summer olympic data set uh, which is available from 19 uh, 18 uh, 96 to 2012 uh, whatever uh the olympic happened what are the medals and everything we are going to uh, see that so first i import the data set from here okay i have imported the data set so i'm going to showcase you the uh, first two rows basically okay so you can use just colon 2 uh, in the pandas data frame you are going to see the first two rows Okay, so there is a year column out there. There is a city column where uh, the it is hosted in the sports and discipline in which discipline uh, this particular athlete Alfred Ajos uh, from the country uh, Hungary. I think gender is uh, men, and in the hundred meter freestyle he got the gold medal. Right. So similar, um, this person Otto, I have got the silver uh, from the country Australia men. And a hundred meter style. So in this way, this data set is designed, and I'm going to use this data set to create a model and showcase you uh, which person is going to own the medal of gold or silver and all. And also, you definitely know the Titanic data set. So in the Titanic data set, I'm going to show the first two rows also using the head methodology, head method of Python, a panda story. So here you can see that uh, who has survived the objective. Okay, then the passenger class, uh, sex of the passenger, age of the passenger, they have any siblings or not? Okay, they have any parts or not? So parts means basically over here, they are parents or not, uh, children they have on board on the ship. Okay, and uh, fear, what was the ticket price uh, in Burke and Dick, in which day uh, they were there? Okay, so this two data set I'm going to use. And also I've given uh, two links over here. From that, uh, you can get a lot of free data sources uh, in the Kaggle data set. Okay. So this is uh, another data set. Uh, from there, you're going to get a lot of different, different open source data set, which you can use uh, to create different, different projects. Uh, this is the first one. And second one, definitely the UCI ML repository. So from there, you're you're going to get a uh, lot of free data sources, right? So using that, you can use your machine learning projects and you can understand the projects. Uh, you can create the data sets and everything. Okay, so that is what I was telling that objective is most important in any data science or any project. So for Titanic, the objective is to find out who is going to survive or not. For Summer Olympic data set, it is going to objective is who is going to own the gold or silver or bronze medal, right? So this is the data sourcing part, right? So now, next part is the data understanding. So 
so data understanding is once you get the data and everything uh, you get the data now you have to understand the data this is the first and critical part of any data science you have to understand the data very deeply without that uh, it is be very difficult to create any kind of model right you have to uh, clean the data sets right you have to understand the data if the data is not coming in a structural way you have to clean the data you have to put it in a structured format like in a tab tabular format which i have shown and just uh, now and understand every feature available like you have to understand every column and how it is uh, related to the uh, output basically objective and uh, how the features are related, related to the business objective so hello if, uh, sir sorry to interrupt you but uh, yeah. can you just uh, make your screen full screen mode because attendees are unable to see the screen Uh, see the full screen, clear screen. Uh, like uh, what we'll do, I will. Full, just Stop. keep it in full screen mode. Okay, okay, sir. Sure, sure. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, I think everyone can see now. Okay. Yes. So, yes. yeah. Thank you. so the how the features are related to the business that is what i was telling so for an example if i give you like uh, if you know the aviation like if you are from the aviation industry and if you uh, you have given a data set uh, and in the data set there is a column called the asp right so definitely if you don't do not know the uh, domain knowledge uh, you will not understand what is the asp means so asp means basically the available seat and kilometer right so if you are onboarded onboarded in a plane so in the plane have some uh, uh, like uh, like the different planes have different number of seats so if you are if are going in a big plane so it has like uh, many seats like maybe 230 or 300 seats it has okay so number of seats into the number of kilometer that plane has flown right so this two if you multiply then it is become the ask that's the available seat kilometer and that's the capacity of a plane in the industry so if you know the domain knowledge then you can understand the data better and if you do not know the uh, domain properly then that is fine like if you are a fresher you just come to this field you do not know the domain or anything then you can learn more about the domain uh, what are the different terms are available and also you dig into the data and understand from the data as well so in the most of the cases is very difficult to understand know everything prior but if you know the data very well if you dig into the data you see everything uh, in the data uh, in a deep detail way then it will be much more easier to create the model and uh, explain the uh, output of the model to your stakeholders okay so again i'm going to the uh, jupyter notebook or google collab collaboratory so i'm going to showcase the data understanding over here okay as i already imported these two uh, data like titanic data set and the summer olympic data set so once you get the data what you do you just try to see if is there any null values are there right so if i just run these two uh, codes over here you can see that like in titanic data set the only the h column have some 177 uh, null values and there is a date column and that is not very relevant in the problem statement so we can ignore this one so 177 null values are there okay and also if you want to see like with respect to the whole data size what percentage of it then you can use this uh, particular method for mean right dot mean if you use that then you can see that it's only 19% of the whole data set okay so in this way you can see that and then also you can see uh, if i comment this out and you can i comment this one uncomment it and if i run this cell to see the null values for summer olympic you can see that in this data set only the country column have some null values which is for 0.01% it's a very minimal amount of null values it has right in this data set so in this way at the beginning you can just see like which of the null values are there is there any null value then why the null values is coming 
the null value could come from some uh, if the data is generated from any uh, by any machine there could be some machine generated error or any kind it's depend on the different kind of data sets if it's a manual error could be also there so there could be different scenarios uh, if you get some null values, you can ask your stakeholders. Uh, if you feel that it's uh, some kind of error, you can ask them uh, about the data. Then you're going to see like uh, you're going to see the information of the data. Okay, so if I run this cell for Titanic data set, you can see that like what are the different columns are there? Uh, what how many are the not null are there? And also the data types. The data types like it's an integer format, objective format. So these are the basic checks you have to do first, and then you can see some statistical property or basic statistical property of the data, like uh, using this uh, described method of pandas, and then you can transpose it to see in this way. So you can see that like a uh, passenger class. Okay, passenger class count is this, uh, and its mean is not very significant. But for age column, you can see that its count is this. There is a null value that is why it is lower. Then the mean age is around 29. Uh, standard deviation is 40. Minimum is, I think, uh, four months baby are there, I think. And maximum is, uh, I think, 38, right? Sorry, maximum is 80. And median is around 20, 28. Okay. And all this information you can see at a glance using this particular uh, method called describe for pandas and after that if, if you want to see the top 10 uh, columns of the titanic you can just see dot top 10 of the data set how it is looks like okay then uh, okay then i have found out that in the titanic data set uh, okay, okay. Now I found out the Titanic data set in H column, there are some null values are already present. So I want to see in the null values where it is present, how the ratio, like you can see that I filter the data in the H column, there is null value. So I have used the Titanic H dot is null I've used. Okay, then I see in the sixth column, male and female, how many are there? Like how many uh, men are there? How many females are there? Like in the null column, male are around 124 and female are around 53. Like 53 uh, females are there. There is no any uh, sex is there. And for the male, 124 uh, male are there. Their age is not pre present over there. Okay. So this is the first check. Then I'm going to say the similar kind of relation based on the survive. That is our objective, right? So if you see this, so uh, the people yes, who, can. hello? Uh, yes, we can see that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So people who haven't survived, so it's a 125 and 52 people who have survived. So if you want to see the uh, mean age of it, then overall age, how it is coming. Okay. So the one methodology uh, which uh, most of the people follow is that uh, just impute the age value with 29 which is the mean average age of everything right so but the best way would be to import the value based on the in this way like if i just run this cell what it's going to tell you it is going to tell you like zero like the people who haven't survived whose age is 30 who have survived whose age is 28 right and their median is also 28, 28. And then I'm going to group by the whole data set into the survived and sex, like people who have survived and sex, male or female, based on that, what is their mean age? Okay, the people who haven't survived and who are female, their age is 25, who haven't survived who's male, there is 31, right? So it's more detailed compared, uh, based on that they are survived or not and they're male or female it's going to give you the average age. And I'm going to use this average age to input the data whenever there is an null value. Right? So, okay, going to uh, input the data. So the data imputation, uh, imputation is coming in the next slide. Okay, so for that, what do you do? 
I uh, subdivide the data into two parts. Uh, one part is the age null, which is I filtered over here, and another one is the age not null, right? So not null, I filter the data into two parts. And after that, uh, I have only taken the data set where age is null, and I drop this particular age column because I'm going to add the age column again. Okay, input the age column. Okay, I'm going to run this cell again. Uh, I have removed that age column and then I'm going to merge it. So earlier, whenever I've, I've told you, so basically I've saved this particular result, this data frame as an age imputation uh, variable, right? And then I'm going to uh, merge this particular data frame on the main data set over here using the left join. Okay, on survived and six on these two columns. Okay, if I just uh, run this cell. Okay, if I run this cell, you can see that I have added this particular age column uh, whenever there was null value. And now it is based on this uh, six and they have survived or not. So in this way, it is going to uh, add it in the data set. And after that, again, I re retain the whole data set. So over here, I have the pd.concat method of pandas. And over here, I've given the age not null, okay, which is uh, there is no any null values and which is the age null where I have inputted the data, which is the age null, okay. So there I have added these two and I have used the axis equal to zero because I am adding these two data frame on a row wise. So if I run this cell, it is going to add these two data frame and create the whole data set. And in the data set, there should not be any kind of null value on the age column. You can see that there is no any null value on the age column now. So the data set, the data set is recreated in a proper way now. So, so now uh, re, uh, basically we are going to see the relationship again, like how the distribution has changed. It's like you have to always remember that whenever you do something on the data set, the distribution always changes. So if I just run this cell, you see the distribution difference now. So if I uh, show you the earlier distribution, I'm going to show the earlier. Okay, in that way, it was a 30 and 28, right? Mean and median was 28, 28. Okay, for zero and one both. But now as I included the age, the distribution have changed now. So earlier uh, it was 30, 20, it is almost similar, but the median has changed now. So it's now become 31 and 20. So these small, small things are affect your data uh, preparation and also impact your uh, machine learning. So, so now the data set is more centralized because uh, mean and median both close very close to each other now compared to the earlier. So it is more centralized data more uh, normally distributed compared to the earlier one and it is going to perform very well compared to the uh, earlier uh, not uh, imputed data set right okay so now i'm going to go to the slide again okay so this is in this way you are you are able to understand the data very well and then you are going to see the uh, you're going to use a visualization. There are a lot of visualization libraries out there like uh, Matplotlib, Seaborn, Plotly. There are a lot of different libraries are already there. They're industry standards. They can use, you can use those uh, to understand the data in a much more better way, or you can also present the data. But uh, sometimes what happened is that uh, like Pandas is already have some built-in plots, which can help you out to in your understanding of the data, right? So in the next session, I'm going to showcase you how to use the pandas default uh, uh, visualization libraries, which is already there, right? So if I again go to the notebook. Okay. So the visualization part. Okay. So now we have imputed the age. So if you want to see the age uh, in, a, in a histogram, so you can create it very easily using the 
pandas like you have to use dot plot only and at the end you have to use the kind equals to his that you can use so if you just run this cell you are going to get a histogram so basically it is what tell is that like from 0 to 10 there are approximately more than 50 people are there uh, and maximum people is more than 300 a little lower than 350 between i think 25 and 30 and like uh, 50 to 55 it's around there's little less than 50 so in this way you can uh, demonstrate uh, your knowledge or your understanding to your stakeholders using some visualizations and also uh, you can create some box plot to understand if there is any uh, outliers in the data set or not so you can just run this cell just the same code in the kind you have to just use the box that's it and it is going to create some box plot right so you can see that like uh, it's a box plot and it's a fence and the upper fence and the lower fence and the dots which is coming as a black these are basically the outliers because it is uh, higher than the fence which uh, based on the quartile uh, understanding so quartile uh, fence is basically the 1.5 times of the IQR interquartile range then any point which is uh, beyond that the interquartile range then it's become the uh, outliers for any data set so that is you can see over here some there are a lot of data sets data points are there which is uh, outlier and then uh, we can we're going to see the uh, another plot using this data set which is a summer olympic data set right so in this data set how what we're going to see we're going to see is uh, basically then summer olympic you can group by the data set using year okay and made like uh, in uh, in every year every year how many medals uh, people have owned in this event basically and then i i've just taken the count of it then taken the reset index and given a name of the number of medals in this way you can just uh, give a name over there also which a newly created column okay then i've done the set index equals to year because i want the year in the x-axis and plot is the bar plot it is going to be frequency bar plot how many uh, medals uh, have got in every year so if i run this cell you can see that like uh, for different different years like how many medals uh, people have got like as its time goes the number of medals have increased strongly okay so so in this visualization, uh, Pandas have built-in visualizations which you can use to understand the data very well and also present it to the stakeholders if you want. And also I'll be given some links over here. So if you go, if you want to see different different Pandas plots, uh, if you got stuck or if you want to see uh, which plot you want to use for your analysis for your presentation. So there are a lot of examples you'll find over here. Uh, like whenever you want to, create some visualization you can just refer to this link and create how they have done it you can just follow the same you can just create different different plots over here scatter matrix and disperse a lot of different things here right so this is the pandas built-in methods so for matplotlib also you can uh, follow this link so there are a lot of uh, different examples are already there and suppose you want to create this particular chart right so what you can do is you can just click on this chart and you have the ready-made code. You just put your data over here and you can create these charts. This way you can do it uh, for Seaborn also. You can get the data same way. Okay, so similar way, like you have the chart and you can just refer to this data, this code and you can just create the data set. And then for Plotly also, you're going to create that in the similar way. So the for Plotly, what is the only difference is that for Plotly, it is more interactive uh, to understand because in the other uh, libraries, you're not going to get the interactive chart. So Plotly, you can just uh, hover around the plot and you're going to showcase the different year and different different uh, metrics which you have used. It is going to showcase that. So it's a more interactive plot, right, in the Plotly. 
Okay. Now we have talked about the data visualization. Now I can go to the presentation. Okay. So now is the most critical part of this presentation, which is the feature creation and feature extraction, right? So for feature creation, uh, it is very important for any data science project because uh, a lot of times what happened is that whatever feature you have given, uh, maybe that is not very uh, relevant as a raw format, but you can create some features out of it based on your business understanding or problem statement understanding. So the feature creation is important and feature extraction means basically you have given the, given the data and from the data set, you're just understanding the relationship with the data with the output. And based on that, you're just selecting the best uh, features out of it. Okay. So you're extracting the feature in that format. So, okay, business goals. So again, I'm going to the notebook. Okay. Okay, now is a feature creation, right? So, so for feature creation, first I need to see some of the relationship like how the relationship is with the business objective or the output. So if I just run this cell, I'm going to see the relationship between the passenger class and the survey for Titanic data set. So you can see that that number of uh, passenger class is one, the number of survival is higher. And if the passenger class is three, number of survival is also higher, but compared to passenger two, it is uh, like it is lower, right? So now this one and also you can see the relationship with sex and survive uh, mostly the people who are female they are more survived in the titanic and people who are male they are less survived in the titanic this is the one thing and then you can see that like uh, what is the fear relationship definitely with the passenger class is higher what their fear is definitely higher ticket price uh, which is middle, it is 20, it is 13. So these are the basic checks you can basic understanding will have. Because it's a simple data set, it is very easy to understand. For if it is a complex data set, you have to dig into the uh, these steps in a more detailed way. You have to see how the relationship is all about, how it is affecting the output, which is your objective, which is survived, right? So from the data set only, you can say that if there is a female, there is a high chance it is going to survive without any modeling. So that's the intuition part understanding of the data okay so now i'm going to create features on these data sets some are olympic so let me showcase you the data set first so yes yeah. we are running out of time i suggest to take up uh, q and a part now hmm? as we are running out of time i guess there are a lot of questions in the q and a okay Okay, then I just uh, quickly showcase the everything. Uh, then I yes, just... yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so in this data set, you can see only the uh, uh, basically there is no numerical column. There is only the categorical columns over there. So you can just uh, I if you just put it in the machine learning, it will not be able to understand it. So first of all, we have to convert into the numerical format. So for that, what I do uh, again, I see the uh, relationship is null and null, these things we have seen. And you can see only four, four uh, countries there with null values. And then we see which country have some null values is there. Okay, so these are, there are different checks we have done on that data sets. Okay, so if uh, there is no null value, then if, if there is any athlete who is spending name is coming as pending. So that's a false in the data. Then you see, then we're going to remove the data set basically, because you can see that in the data set, it is less than five percent. So you can safely remove those null values in the data set. So that is why I have used the drop in over here. So there is not a null value right now in the data set. Then we're going to create the feature creation. So for feature creation, so we're going to create a first feature, which is a based on the based on the country and which metal they have uh, purchased. 
like how many metal they have purchased basically this country this metal like like suppose for usa i have purchased, uh, got gold in this year how many times they have got so that is what i have created here this first feature and i'm going to just input the feature on the uh, data set okay so this is the first feature country metal count then i'm going to create another feature which is gender binary basically so zero and one i've given is a hot, one hot encoding then i've created the label encoding okay so in the label encoding you can see that uh, i've given one two three based on it is uh, gold silver or bronze so in this way i've done it and then i check if there is any relationship between the uh sport and discipline so you can see that in aquatics I have seven disciplines so in this way i'm going to create another feature which is uh, combining these two sports and discipline and see how many times they are present basically the cardinality of the data i'm doing it over here and then i'm going to add it over here in that data set okay so you can see this it has been added so now again in the code uh, feature number five is this okay and uh, okay so now we have created the features so now we are uh, just selecting the features we need the numerical features which i have created so you can see that the country middle account is basically this one which i have created and i just uh, instead of name of country i just use this particular values as a country right it's a numerical feature one then gender binary uh, in the gender binary using zero and one so numerical become so in place of gender category for sports discipline i'm using is the cardinality uh, which i've created in the earlier uh, code which i've used it over here in place of the uh, category name as a string then event country medal count which is basically the average of the the country have got a medal that is that particular variable i've used and the medal level is basically the output uh, output uh, which is going to predict one two three right so now we are going to build the model building part we have created the data then we see uh, if the correlation how it is coming uh, using the uh, sns uh, sns basically a c1 plot using that you can just uh, create a uh, uh, create is this heat map and from there you can see if there any correlation so you can see that among the different features there is no any uh, very correlation so you can just use this one and uh, as data set and it's really good data set because the correlations are very minimal between the features and now we're going to use this uh, data set um, we're just doing some basic checks like if there is it's unbalanced data or imbalanced data so you can see in among three classes all the number of records are pretty similar this it's a balanced it now so now we're going to divide the data set into two parts uh, it's a training data set and the validation data set so training data set is mean where we are going to train the data set and test data set and validation data set is where the model haven't seen the data and we're going to uh, uh, check if it is performed better in the real world so that is why we have uh, subdivided the data set into uh, 30, 70 30% and then we check again in the data sets how it is distribution looks like it is also quite similar right then we are going to do the train test splits using the escalon so we have, well in the training data set we have subdivided the training as a 75% and testing as a 25% and then we are using the random forest algorithm okay to train the model okay so again we are going to predict the output then we are going to see the result of the model so it is performing almost 90% right for among different classes so f1 score is 90 88 87 it is performed better in the test data now see how it is performing on the training data uh, validation data set so it is also performing pretty well on that okay so now let's like just see how the test and output is looks like in actual it is three predict this three one it is one three it is three so you can just visualize uh, 
through visualization you can just see how the model perform pretty well or not then you can check the feature importance which feature contributed more into the model right so you can see that year and the country medal count this particular feature contributed a lot approximately 70 percent of time gender binary uh, sports disciplinary cardinality which is the cardinal feature which i created even uh, country medal count so these features using that you can to interrupt yeah yeah sure uh, i would like to request the attendees to please fill in the poll about feedback as it helps us to conduct more such sections uh, i am launching the poll right now do fill the form uh, you can proceed okay. now okay sure, sure so using that you can just understand the uh, model pretty well and using that uh, model pretty well and that will help you out in your uh, model understanding basically so i have also given some of the uh, in the presentation uh this which just i have already talked feature selection model building i have given some of the links which can help you out so there is the validation part so how are going to justify the model feature importance which i have shown you the which factors behind the model performance so you have to understand the feature pretty well and then uh, why this feature is uh, performing better than you can understand it and explain it to your stakeholders so that's the part uh, we have to analyze more on the data set and then uh just to one side like how many uh apis or methods we have covered so far in the whole presentation so here you can see that we have covered all these uh, apis and what to get help from there basically you can search google if you get stuck stack overflow definitely you can also reach out to linkedin to me and i can help you out if you have any question on that and also you can follow me on social media and uh, i'm going to give you a link of this uh, of the github repository from there you can get all the material okay so the chat i'm going to give that uh, from there you're going to get all the material if you need in future references thank you uh, uh, let me know what are the questions you have can i help you out with the q and a questions i will be sure. would be reading the questions sure sure it will be great sir can you give definition for regression and classification with example uh regression classification examples so regression definitely would be something where you forecasting is a continuous variable it could be sub suppose like uh, if you want to uh, for an aviation if i say if you want to predict uh, the ticket price like if you have some features the passenger different different features you have of aviation and you want to find out what will be the ticket price in the next day or in the next flight so that could be the regression and classification would be uh, for the same example if i tell uh, if that uh, particular plane or particular plane is going to uh, be there or not like it is going to be scheduled or not that's a classification yes or no that's a Uh, only different two things regression and classification next one please where does numpy comes in the development and validation stages numpy is everywhere basically uh, numpy is a numerical computing library and if you see the pandas pandas is based on the lib uh, numpy right all the operations you do on the pandas it is uh, basically backbone its backbone is basically the numpy so all the arrays and everything which is there in the numpy it is already incorporated in the pandas so numpy is everywhere and you can think pandas is a wrapper on top of the numpy with more additional features on top of the numpy and it okay. is used in ha huh. okay yeah, tell me i was reading next question okay you can complete the previous one No, no, you can carry forward the next question. Which algorithm is mostly used in real-time data science projects? Uh, which algorithm? You can think uh, random forest, which I showed, say widely used algorithm. Uh, another one is definitely XG Boost. Uh, there was an, another one which is a Cat Boost. Uh, definitely uh, Light GBM, which is developed by Microsoft. This one. Uh, another one is. Uh, 
uh, another one you can think of the neural networks definitely in the industry we are using uh, is a summer data set is for uh, clustering uh, sorry uh, repeat once please uh, is summer data set is for clustering the data set which has been used at the very beginning imported uh, summer data set okay it's a summer olympic data set it's a clustering problem it is just showing you like uh, which person is going to own the uh, gold medal or uh, silver medal it's a multi class classification problem uh, yeah uh, sir i am a data science aspirant almost finished my course can you share me steps and also things we have to keep in mind while doing working on data also any project suggestion uh you can create a, any kind of project uh that data sources which i have shared over there you can just go in the kaggle data set and see there are a lot of different data sets are there right so whatever you prefer you can just follow that and create your own uh, model out of it and also you can share your knowledge and today's world only the learning is not the thing implementation is very important so there is a, another uh, package is for the streamlit which you can use and in streamlit you can deploy your models free like you can create some visualizations for free and you can deploy it model in the host it in the cloud it's totally free and you can also share that to the your uh, recruiters and it will be help you on your uh, job hunting basically the titanic data set is for classification is it right it is classification yeah can you tell something about feature importance for example in titanic data set which feature or column is more important and how to input new feature based on what we have uh in titanic data set which is more important so similar way the way i have shown you you have to create a model uh, okay so there are two ways you can do it so basically if i go so you can create a model using the pen uh, titanic data set and see uh, what are the features are important over here or at the same time what you can do is that uh, you can just check the relationship with the output and the features which i have shown you over here so over here like this so titanic data set objective is uh, to find out who is going to survive or not one is survive zero is not survived so you can see that uh, if the passenger class is one the survival percentage is higher so from the intuition you can understand that this particular uh, method part, uh, particular feature is important if the class is one or class is three okay class is two so in this way you can understand it the data set uh, you can understand if the feature is important or not also you can see is that if the there are 100 features are there for an example so you can see the correlation uh, like survive correlation if the it is a continuous feature then you can see the correlation if it's a highly correlated with the output or y then it's a very important feature okay in this way you can do it if we all fit a model how to set right okay if you overfit a model so overfit means uh, basically your model perform very well in your training data set but it is not able to perform very well in your test or real life scenarios right so you can overfit it basically you have to uh, there are a lot of procedures you have to understand you have to see if you prepare the data set pretty well or not uh, if there is gap in the data set and once you do that you uh, while you training the data set you need to see how for for an example uh, for random forest it, the overfitting also depend on the number of trees you have used number of depth of the trees leaf leaf you have used depth of the trees all the different factors are important it is based on the algorithm or you can use some hyperparameter optimization techniques uh, like a randomized search or grid search in that way the, it is more optimized and it will be able to help you uh, in your overfitting scenarios we will only depend on clusters based on elbow method how we will determine how many clusters to use 
uh, elbow method will definitely help you to identify the clusters through the visual uh, that uh, curve or you can use the silhouette coefficient which is also there uh, basically i would suggest that you use both like silhouette coefficient and elbow method both and uh, like it will tell you how many clusters you should create uh, popular journals for data science uh, there are there are many today uh, you can definitely follow the kaggle uh, kaggle there is uh, there is a uh, toward data science is there in medium definitely the analytic data is there i have learned a lot of things from there also. so basically you have to follow the internet and there are a lot of good resources are there you can find through google also uh, that's it okay thank you uh i yeah thanks a lot uh, somerata on behalf of analytics vidya i would like to thank you for your time and for delivering such a wonderful section i am um, sure our audience found it insightful and hopefully we can conduct more such sessions with you in future attendees i am uh, i would be sharing the linkedin profile of uh, somerata roy in the chat section uh, even the uh, github use all, all the useful links will be shared in the chat section i hope you guys filled in the feedback poll if not i request you to please fill in the poll about feedback as it helps us to conduct more such sessions